Welcome to Courtney on Health, brought to you by MalcolmPresents.com and other websites. And <laughs> guess what we're talking about, Mets? Are they are they still in the league? Yes. I don't know. For the, they beat the Yankees I, yesterday. So well, being in Los Angeles, I'm not really involved. I don't get involved with baseball, even with the Dodgers, until uh, mid to end September. I'm starting to get involved as soon as the playoffs start. This was this weekend at uh, City Field. It was no, the Mets they, and the yeah. Yankees. Now this so. weekend, I was watching tennis. Oh, okay. And I wonder tennis. if there were tailgate parties. I was going to say, do they tailgate at tennis games? Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> know. It's, it's a, it was a U.S. Open. I yeah. don't know if, if, if you guys listened to it, but the two yeah, we finalists. We know. It was, it was two, quite a thing. The two finalists on the women's side right. was uh, the, the, old, the oldest one was 19. Right. And I'm she aware. was 19 last uh, during the weekend. And the youngest who eventually won was 18. Yep. Wow. Yeah, that that's uh, and, probably and, having a lot of parties in in uh, Britain right now. Yeah, the Britain uh, and uh, even the Canada, the British the, and the Canadians at uh, the U.S. Uh, Open. And, and, so, and the, so let's get let's get this started here, Malcolm. <laughs> why do do they have tailgate parties? I don't know if they have tailgate. We're talking. By the way, we're going to be talking about tailgate parties and packing, mm -hmm. hopefully, some healthy foods there, even and celebrate versus. So should I do an intro or just go right to the sure. poem? Oh, do it. All an, right, do an I'm intro. doing the intro. I, I'm going to talk fast now then. Uh, so again, hi, Courtney and Malcolm, and welcome to Courtney on Health, a Zoomcast series about how to get through these lingering, oh God, COVID-19 times uh, with tips on nutrition and exercise given by Courtney Gravenese, registered dietitian with a Master of Science in Nutrition and Applied Physics. Theology. That's some good stuff. Courtney is an experienced nutritional and health consultant in the New York metro area and now the globe and will help guide you on a path to wellness and health. So we're talking about tailgating today, food and, and, and tailgating. And here's a little poem by Ken Jordan called Tailgate Party. It's my tailgate party. You're welcome to come. Music blasting and we pop in champagne around a hot Weber grill in the parking lot. Got my game day apron on, cooking oakwood cued baby back ribs, slow grilled and smoked, brushed in sweet hickory, barbecue sauce, and laced with a half cup of Jim Beam whiskey. <laughs> child, child, this party is popping. Got a deep pot of baked beans, maple flavored with thick center cut bacon strips smoked over natural flavored mesquite wood chips. Sweet yellow corn on the cob, pre-cooked in milk, honey, then grilled and brushed with lemon or lime, juice and butter, sprinkled with parsley flakes. Yum, yum, yum. Mm. Ain't here yet? I'm making sourdough grilled bread with a soft melt castello or castello reserved Havarti cheese. Cucumber infused water over crushed ice with a hint of mint flavor. I have some angry orchard hard apple cider over ice in the cooler. Oh yeah. My tail my tailgate party is popping. <laughs> it's game time, so bone appetite. So you guys are not, you'll have to excuse We're me. I'm hungry. Football season and ah, yeah, that'll do it. And the gin beam and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So I, you know, right now, uh, if it's football, the odds are that you might be partaking in a ritual of a tailgate party. Yeah. Uh, according to the milehighreport.com, which is a strange name, you know, but thinks of Mile High Club, I don't know. There are a couple of theories on the origins of tailgating. One theory is that the tailgate party occurred during the first college football game between Rutgers and Princeton. Apparently spectators spent their pregame ritual grilling sausages at the tail end of the horse. This theory has persisted for a long, long time, but it, it is a tale <laughs> that is not totally authenticated. Another theory which seems more accurate is that Green Bay Packers fans coined the actual term tailgating during the team's first year in business in 1919, when my mom was born back then. Uh, fans would back their pickup trucks around the field and fold down their tailgates for seating. 
Uh, naturally, food and beverages were brought along to keep the appetite in check. So what are the most popular tailgate foods? Is there a way to make a tailgate menu healthy? Do we want to? Uh, Courtney will give us some great information on delicious and yes, even healthy food for your tailgate adventure. So Courtney, bring us into this uh, topic. Yeah, so it's interesting when I was doing the history because I really never knew the history of tailgating. You just, I just assumed that at some point along the way, somebody dropped down their hatch and you know had a cooler full of food in there. But um, although they didn't have cars back then, back further than the football games, like the first football games, I heard it had, had um, this seems a little far-fetched, but I guess um, there were people who showed up in DC back in the 1800s during this like civil war period to sort of root for the Confederates or the Union mm -hmm. and with picnic baskets. Um, I mean, it seems a little crazy, but anyway, more theories. <laughs> and the reality is whether you go bougie bouge or whether you go really basic, the real point and the fun of tailgating parties is certainly the food and the beer and the you know, hard cider and whatever it is you're drinking, but it's about company, right? Fun friends and being you know around a bunch of people. So um, my dear friend Liz um, is a huge, huge Giants fan, um, has been going to the home games for as far back as I can remember. So I tapped into her this week about, you know, tell me about some of the stuff that you've seen, you know, foods, um, and I, I didn't make it today because it required um, a smoker, which uh, we currently don't have one, but um, her all-time favorite, or one of her favorite recipes, I'll post the recipe, is for smoked bacon wrapped kielbasa that she says one of the guys in her crew has been bringing for a long, long time. Kielbasa? So, um, you know, smoke. No, but it, she swears by it and says it's, you know, it's amazing. So people bring grills, people bring smokers. They really like get into it. They're out there, cold weather, nice weather. Doesn't matter. These are the hardcore fans who are there. So typically you would not think about tailgating foods as the healthiest of the healthy. And to your point, Maxine, you know, if you're only going to one tailgate party, you know, just and live live the day and, and live, live a little, right? Live a little bit, right? Yeah. Nobody is saying that smoked, you know, bacon wrapped kielbasa is healthy. Um, you know, a lot the the buffalo chicken wings, the chilies. Um, usually, it's a lot of things that are either cooked at home and then just kept hot. So I've seen things of like butane fed heating units, so that you're not making the chili there. Um, or the pulled pork there, it's just simply the vehicle to keep it hot while you're, um, you know, tailgating in the parking lot. And we'll talk about food safety um, in a little bit. So pulled pork is great. Hot dog, you know, regular hot dogs and hamburgers, very popular. Again, a lot of people bring grills. Um, if you don't do beef, um, you can certainly do, you know, turkey burgers, chicken burgers. You can you make up, listen, there's no rules here. That's the beauty of it. You can make what you want. You can certainly make yourself some, you know, impossible burgers um, or any, you know, vegetable based burger and bring those along and grill those up. Generally, the rule is food for, for many because you're probably feeding a lot of people in your crew. And many times it's extremely social. So oftentimes you'll share some pulled pork with a neighbor, um, you know, even maybe rooting for another team. Um, so, Handheld is important because you don't really want to be standing unless there's, you know, a, a lot of table around and there typically might not be using a knife and a fork. So if you think about those foods, handheld, um, you know, a hamburger or a hot dog or pulled pork or the chicken, the buffalo chicken, usually very easy to eat uh, foods of that nature. So um, there is the sky is the limit in terms of what you'd like to bring. Um, over the years, I think people have gotten a little bit more creative, maybe spun this a little bit healthier. And one of the trends that's out there are, and I see this in entertaining too, it's a super easy, very casual, easy way to entertain. And that's with like party platters or charcuterie boards. Um, have you guys, are you familiar with mm -hmm. um, charcuterie yep. boards? Mm -hmm. 
So there really is, the beauty of them is you kind of put whatever you can get your hands on. They can obviously, if you are a carnivore, they're going to typically be um, meat, more meat and cheese based. Um, dried meats, cured meats, so prosciutto, dried salamis, maybe pepperoni. Those would typically be sliced up, put on any kind of board. It doesn't have to be fancy. It can be whatever you have. Placed on a board, you add olives. And this is particularly going to be helpful if you don't eat meat and you're more you know, vegetarian based. Olives, tapenades, bean dips and spreads. Um, I've got corn salsa here. It's September and the corn is amazing. So lot, I heard you mentioned corn on the cob, Maxine, grilling up. It's such a great time um, to use corn and it's a great, easy, portable way. You could add something like that onto your board. As I mentioned, different types of nuts, seeds, pumpkin seeds um, are widely available, particularly this time of year. You put out some bread rounds, some different types of crackers out there wide variety of cheeses, and it makes for a very easy, very simple way to feed lots um, and offer a lot, of, a lot of variety. So as we said, if you're not gonna eat any meat products, you're really going to need to look, look more towards those meals that are you know, maybe more soybean, bean-based um, or, or plant-based um, options or nuts and seeds. But you can totally work it that way. Again, no rules. It's just whatever's going to, uh, going to work for you. They have Beyond Burgers now. I guess maybe that could be an option for your veggie friends. Yeah, yeah. I think this is, you know, I mean, this is just stuff like that. Brand. It's Impossible Burger, but yeah, Beyond yeah. is one brand, Impossible. Impossible, yeah. right. I haven't seen them. Um, I, I know they exist. I just haven't seen them in my grocery store. So, you know, this time of year, and I actually see them even throughout the summer, you'll see the pre-made um, slider size. They're smaller. So like I said, handheld. So I haven't seen the plant-based burgers made into smaller versions like mm -hmm. that, but you don't have to buy them that way. It's, you save money. Remember, the more the grocery store does for you, the bigger the price tag, right? So if you're trying to do this on sort of a budget, you buy your own either Impossible Burger or turkey, ground, whatever meat product or meat alternative you're using, buy it in a big pack, make the patties yourself, and save yourself some money um, in that way. So any of these plant-based or animal-based can be made into these cute little slider size and they sell, they're all over the place, little rolls to match with it, super easy, handheld. You bring some condiments to go along with it and if that's your assignment to bring, um, you're good to go. I will say that um, I know that like uh, Reuben sliders um, I've seen uh, is popular. Um, so instead of- That's me. But I'm a Reuben slider. Oh my Reuben gosh, slider. gosh. So um, for Super Bowl. Maxi Margot Reuben, right. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> two uh, years ago, I uh, had people here for Super Bowl and um, I don't eat a ton of, of red meat, but I made both regular pastrami and then I got turkey pastrami and I made my own Reubens. You can't, now again, it, most people would say Reubens are not, you know, you know, you're healthy, Maxine, but generally the sandwich Rubens are not normally known to be, you know, healthy, but you can make them slightly healthier. So for example, maybe using the turkey pastrami as an option, using um, more of the, and this is just bread alone as a local bread company. So I know we get the bread locally around here, which is great. This is rye sourdough. So um, again, it's one of those fermentable foods. So the starter um, is fermented, you know, yeast product. So for some people, even though you're not getting live bacteria, because remember it's been baked, so the bacteria, the probiotics have been killed off. Oftentimes people tolerate things like sourdough rye bread or those breads that are made with that sourdough yeast, um, much easier on the gut, much easier to digest. So certainly an option and it's got wonderful flavor to it. Yeah, what, what, on that line, yeah. Go, you yeah what, what, what I like is a big hero sandwich, you know, big Italian uh, baguette. Slice that open, pour some ham on it, put cheese on it, put uh, uh, mustard on it, and a six pack. That would that makes me happy. <laughs> and a six pack, that's it, huh? Well, that, that, we that's haven't gotten to the drinks yet, but so um, so. <laughs> so there are different um, types of sauerkraut out there. Um, it, it, first of all, sauerkraut is a uh, wonderful fermented food. 
Um, most people know that you need to eat it at room temperature. So this particular brand, it's excellent. It's a little pricier than the stuff that you would get um, that's been cooked down. But I will tell you, if you've had this stuff um, and, or any brand like this, um, it's amazing. Um, and, but it has to be eaten either room temperature or cold. If you put this in a pot, whether you're at a tailgate party or whether you're in your kitchen and set it and boil it up, you're killing off the, uh, the bacteria that are in there. So the beauty of this, back to that you know, handheld Reuben we were talking about is it's served cold um, or room temperature on top of the sandwich. Again, I'm not trying to make something health, you know, super healthy, but it's a little healthier than maybe some of the other alternatives that you might, um, that you might see there. So great option um, to try. Um, spicy foods. I, I have, I know that, um, and I'm, I, I'm a huge fan of spice too. I love the, the kick of, you know, this is Frank's, Tabasco, Cholula. I love all of those hot sauces. Some people do, some people don't. You should know that, however, it's wonderful. A lot of these spicy chili pepper based foods um, are wonderful anti-inflammatory foods. So if you can tolerate them and your gut can tolerate them, the more, uh, the more, the better. This happens to be my spin of um, the buffalo chicken. Normally it's served warm, it's a dip, and normally it's made with cream cheese, um, it's made with sour cream, um, there's a, there is certainly blue cheese in this as well. So again, not necessarily the healthiest of dishes. I turned this around a little bit and spun it my way. I used, um, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's, it's low fat cream cheese, but it's usually labeled as Neufchatel. Are you guys familiar with this? Yeah, yeah, it's like one third less fat. Right, so in yeah. something like this, it's perfectly fine. Um, be, I, I wouldn't say use it in like, if you're making cheesecake or, uh, you know, then you gotta go the real deal. But for something like this, it really works. You're saving a little bit in terms of the fat calories. They haven't monkeyed with it. Sometimes when they take out the fat out of a food, um, they're putting something else in there to make up for that loss of mouthfeel. Um, so in this case, that's not what's happening here. So you can feel comfortable choosing, um, you know, Neufchatel, one third less fat in recipes like this. I will tell you this chicken dip, um, it tastes, it's, it's all the kick that you would expect from it, a lot of flavor, um, and it has pared down, we've pared down the calories a bit uh, because we've used, I've used both Neufchatel and then I've used yogurt um, instead of sour cream in that base um, of the dish. Right. Um, and it's wonderful. You know, it's great. And, uh, you know, you generally a lot of people will like it. You can serve it with a lot of different crudite and vegetables and peppers and celery sticks and cucumbers. And if that stuff's available for people, I'm not saying they won't go for the burger or the slider or the pulled pork, but what we know about watching, like seeing what's available to you and what your eyes will do if it's, if it's right in front of you, if right fruit and vegetables, choose them, or at least have a little bit of it. So always have that available, maybe have some fresh whole fruit available for people um, to, to, you know, to grab. And chances are um, people will, you know, have a piece or two, you know, while they're, while they're there. I, I like the spicy part of things, um, you know, using the Frank's hot, or I like the anchor, uh, which is made in Buffalo. The original Buffalo sauce is from Buffalo. And it's an anchor bar and it is fantastic. And sure. if you could get the original anyway, I can get it online, I know too. Um, and, I and was that, actually in the anchor bar two years ago. I went in, in Buffalo to, or in the city? There was one in, in the Buffalo. city. In Buffalo, that's okay. the original one, right? That's the original, yep, that's now, it. Now, now I have a question. Uh, on uh, for, for tailgate parties, is the, uh, the cook generally a woman or I always see men? do the barbecuing and do it sort of like this is uh, the women leave the kitchen and they just go along for the game and the guys are doing the cooking. You know what? I, ha I, I mean, I will get back to you. I will have to check with my friend Liz. Um, but um, I just think by nature, I mean, I know this is going to sound, you know, it's like, oh, well, of course, women like football too, but maybe it's just numbers, right? If there are more men at a tailgate party, yeah. percentage wise, more men will be the people cooking. But I, I know I'm going to get in trouble for saying that because Shout out for the ladies. We all like football too. So, um, but I don't know. I think it's meant to be a communal type thing, but some people are extremely territorial about their grills. So it might be, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> don't, don't come near me while I'm using my smoker on my grill. It's fine. <laughs> so. 
Yeah, I'm, um, I mean, my thing, I'm simple. Just give me, as I say, my six pack and, and some chips, maybe a little, you know, hot salsa with, uh, uh, with chips and have that and I'm happy. Yeah, so it's, like I said, there are no rules. It's really meant to be, you know, a happy day, a fun day, um, and it usually is. Um, we can't talk tailgate parties without, of course, talking about the libations that normally mm -hmm. accompany said tailgating parties. So um, the sky's, the, not the sky's the limit in terms of volume. I'm talking about this in terms of variety. Let's say that because somebody's got to drive, you know, the... The, the car, the truck home, right? So um, all sorts of beers. Um, you can go again, you can do the Budweiser route or you can do fancy and do imported. It doesn't matter, it's whatever you like. They have spiked seltzers now um, that um, people find really enjoyable. They're a little bit lighter um, 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 in alcohol content and in flavor. So um, it's a little bit easier to drink, particularly if you're starting to tailgate, you know, earlier on in the afternoon. Um, Maxine, you mentioned um, hard ciders. Um, mm -hmm. There's a wonderful, and I bet you every sort of community has their version of this, but this happens to be a great, it's called Hudson North. Um, it's produced uh, right in upstate New York, and actually, the pro some of the proceeds go to fund like for hiking, um, like you know, hitting the trails and preservation of the trails. So um, I know a good reason to enjoy some of your hard cider. But this is a you know, it's a it's a great option for people, and they're widely available now. Um, I've seen them really explode uh, in terms of the, on the market in terms of variety um, and uh, and options available. You do want to keep a lot of low calorie hydrating beverages around as well. So seltzers, um, you know, obviously just plain water. I, I mean, real salt, not hard seltzer, regular seltzer. Um, maybe, you know, have containers of dilute, you know, if you know there aren't gonna be, people don't like water or seltzer, dilute beverages, like, you know, juices around, just so people have got an option. First of all, the rule of, you know, one alcoholic beverage, one non-alcoholic beverage tends to keep the inebriation at bay. So there is a, a reason to always have lots of hydrating fluids around, um, you know, available for, for everybody of all ages. Because remember, it's not just adults. A lot of times these are family, you know, experiences with kids there. So you want to make sure there are options, not just for beverages, but for foods for uh, kids as well. Um, so, um, more variety, the better avocados. Um, I know guacamole is always a big, you know, sort of football type meal. Um, I would say save your money buying pre-made guacamole, even if it's the best, our local grocery store here makes a fantastic guacamole, but you know, I got to basically sell stock in order to buy it. It's, silly. Yeah, it's a little can, pricey. Yeah. Um, so buy yourself some avocados, you know, get them on a bag when they're on sale, let them ripen nicely. It is so easy. You open them up, you mash it. That's why it has to be really soft. Add your own ingredients, a little diced onion in there, lime juice, cilantro. If you dig cilantro, leave it out. If you don't, um, put a piece of plastic wrap on top of it once you've made it so it doesn't get brown. It'll oxidize very quickly. Um, so it's a great, very easy thing to bring. Uh, and it's more affordable if you've uh, you know, made it. Uh, I, have some, I have some quick stats from tailgating.com. Okay. Who Go tailgates more, men or women? 79% are men, 17% are female. Um, it basically says though, as to buying food, 44% of the food is bought by the husband and I'm, you know, man, male, female. It's like, you know, they like to go shopping together, but it together. seems like okay. it seems like the men go. I mean, seventy nine percent is a high number, so you would think that a lot of the cooking is done by men in that number because it's fairly overwhelming, you know. Right. So, but there, you know, there's there's a what are they cooking on? Thirty eight percent, thirty nine percent use a grill, okay. and uh, and they just uh, most of the cooking is done there. That's what they're saying. So interesting. No, food. Is it, does it get, you know, do we have to be careful about, you know, spoiling food there? Yeah, well, that, I'm actually happy to hear that most of the cooking's done there because in theory it's being cooked there um, or, or some mechanism to keep it hot is being done there. 
um, and then served promptly. So from a food safety perspective, and I hate to be a buzzkill, we're talking about so much fun stuff, but the reality is you can nail, get you know nailed with a really nasty foodborne illness if you're not careful. Um, we've touched on this before. That danger zone where bacteria on food can multiply very, very rapidly um, is between roughly 40 degrees and 140 degrees. So you either want to keep that food colder using really good coolers, hard-sided coolers, not fabric ones, not when you're outside all day long like that. Hard-sided coolers, using ice packs, using bags of ice, um, and keeping the foods at that you know, below that 40 degree mark. Um, if you're making on the other side, I'm actually, like I said, I'm glad to hear that, Maxine, because that means the food's being eaten properly and not heated and being kept out. It's hard to keep that food hot for very long periods of time using these coolers. And there are coolers that are designed, I mean, just like a really good uh, food thermos or let's say the, the water bottles that they have now are fluid containers. They'll keep foods either really, really cold for a certain amount of time or hot for a certain amount of time. But that certain amount of time is usually a couple of hours. It's not a really big window. Right. Um, so you've got to be careful about what you're eating. Doesn't matter if it's mayonnaise or not. I know we spoke about that. Um, you do want to watch in particular those protein foods, um, burger meat, plant-based protein too. Okay, just because it's a plant-based doesn't mean it can't fall prey to the same microbes that animal-based protein foods. So all of it has to be kept hot. I would suggest if you're doing this, I know it sounds a little neurotic, bring along a food thermometer. If mm -hmm. you're the chef or the griller at these um, events, just stick the thermometer in, do a little food check. If food's been sitting out for a long time, um, you know, just do a little check to see, um, you know, what where the temperature is, particularly for those foods that again are um, going to be more protein based. They tend to be the, uh, the first line uh, where microbes are going to attack. Your, your cured meats, um, just be, remember that was a way, way of preserving food. Um, so I'm not suggesting we eat more cured meats. They have their the host of issues, but it does buy more time with them um, because they have the acid that's in them. They've been cured to a point where bacteria don't like that. They find it inhospitable mm -hmm. to live there. So it's less susceptible um, to those microbes. Yeah, well, um, well the, the real danger of uh, a tail, tailgate partying, a tailgate before the game or after the game, is not necessarily the food. What has gotten the most press, right, is people getting too high on alcohol yep. and, and the fans and then one group of fans, whether you're, you know, let's say it's a giant game versus a, a Washington Red, or Washington football mm -hmm. club game, they start fighting with each other because yes. both of them are sort of like high and that's a, and and I think they have to stop the tailgate. I'm not sure of a tailgate. I know that they've stopped drinking in most stadiums, you know, like in, in the uh, 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 after right halftime. Now. I think they have to stop selling. First of all, you can't, you, you know, when you're tailgating, you can't bring in everything. It's got to stay out right. in the parking lot. But I think you're right. I don't know for sure. And I don't know if it's every stadium, but I do believe at one point, and it might be either uh, either after halftime. Halftime. Um, they stopped selling um, alcohol of all types, which is probably not. You're right. Heated emotions, too much booze. It's, it's a good thing taken you know, to a bad level, but, um, you know, moderation, it's meant to be a fun, really social, you know, a communal event. Um, and it can be fun. It doesn't have to be this complete, you know, dietary disaster. I, but know, but but I, I, I don't like monkeying with people's traditions, right? So if there's been, if there are three generations of families going to a Giants game, um, and it's the grandson, the father and the, and the grandfather, and they've been making their famous pulled pork, you know, for decades, you know, I'm, I have a hard time saying, well, don't have that anymore. Have your impossible, but it's, you know. It's not going to work. Right, but if it, it's <laughs> once, at, once every two weeks or six times a year, whatever. Yeah. And, 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 and most of the time they, they uh, associate tailgating with the football games. But I yeah, think it's they, pretty, it, it, they, they, they do that. I mean, there's, there's you know, again, there's uh, a large proponent of um, people uh, of mostly males going to this. Yeah, so but I, I, it, I think it's more more like when the games are in the afternoon, you know, when, right. when you can go there, you know, if it's a two o'clock game or a one o'clock game, you get there 11, 12 o'clock. 
I don't know if right. you have a 7.30 basketball game, whether someone's going to get there at 7.30 to uh, 6 o'clock to tailgate. Yeah, I think it's football is, seems to be the, the more popular place to do it. So, and then you also got to be careful now with COVID. You know, I, I guess there might, might be some restrictions. There might be something, I don't, depending on what state you're in, uh, I think. What, what you can do and what you cannot do. You mean so, about spa spacing, yeah, how many Spacing people? between cars, you know, I mean, it's outdoors, so that's a good thing. Right. So, uh, so I guess you can feel a little more comfortable. Well, but, I, I don't know about spacing, but you have like 50,000 people crammed into the stadium sitting right next to each other. Yeah, I'm aware. You know, cheering. You know, yeah, I won't I be going to any game anytime soon, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be watching it on. I'm. I'm yeah. I. I kind of watched part of the Tampa Dallas game. So, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm a football fan. I was watching yesterday. I was watching. I'm. I'm uh, now in the LA Rams. Right. So. Yeah. Well, I was joking. I was. I was. I told you like to show you how old. I needed a shirt to put on. I wanted to really sort of do the part here. It's a very clearly. It's a very old shirt because uh, Brady's no longer with the Patriots. <laughs> He's with Tampa. He's with Tampa. He's with Tampa. And, and yeah. uh, I don't know if you saw the game. I mean, he had a Thursday night game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and he, 44 years old. It's amazing. Yeah, he's he's in, he's literally, I mean, I, I don't know what I don't know what they're infusing him with, but I want it. So well, you know. well, he, he has a dietitian. <laughs> give me some of that. I'll have what you're having. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he has a dietitian that uh, travels with him. Of course. So uh uh, and I think he has a book out on, on his diet, which actually one day we should get into that sports diet and what people yeah, eat. Yeah, that's, it's, yep, absolutely. It's that's a, a good, topic. that's a good show. That's a good topic. Yeah. But, 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 he, but he's say. amazing, you know, especially at, uh, you know, 44 for uh, football, that, that that's a grandfather. Right. Tell me, yeah. for, uh, something's telling me that um, Tom Brady's not consuming a whole lot of, um, Red meat, uh, no, no, no. pork, and some uh, bacon wrapped uh, hot dogs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, he. Uh, I well, think he he's definitely, from what I hear, he's he's vegetarian for the most part. Might not vegetarian, but I know he has a healthy diet. Plus, he exercises regularly because at forty four years old to withstand those things that his body goes through, it's amazing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah. That's what that's what Ali Marpet, who I uh, who I know his mom, who's a Super Bowl champ, he's uh he keeps an eye on Brady. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll shout out to Ali Marpet uh, on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because uh, absolutely he absolutely. he, he uh, I, I, now I think about him because of you know football season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, uh, two degrees of separation. It, it is. It's amazing. I'll shout out to Joy Rose also. But, she, but, raised, and, she raised a good boy. Go ahead. Anyway, guys, <laughs> would you believe it's the end of our show? I know. No. It always goes fast. This was fun. My gosh. Yeah. Our, it's Monday night football. Who's playing tonight? Well, well there's Monday night football. I forget. Oh, come uh, on. Who's playing tonight? I, I know it's Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. Malcolm. I, it's Baltimore. I don't know who they're playing. Neither team I uh, root for. So I just uh, I have to I have I to know. root for someone. Whether well, it's a we, team we, we or dropped a the ball on that one. We dropped the football on that. One. Oh my God! Well, the, the only thing I remember going to football <laughs> games. This is, going, this, year. this is going so, way back when I lived in New York. I used to go to football games. Uh, I'll tell you how old I am. At Yankee Stadium, when the New York Giants played, or Shea Stadium when when the. Uh, uh, oh, that was. A, yeah, when, when the. Uh, what was, was, that was Y.A. Tittle. Uh, actually, Y.A. Tittle, Tittle, but yeah. I, I, I get you on that one. <laughs> and, and Chuck, Chuck yeah. Connolly. But anyway, yeah. now so. this is when I, I, I was older. We used and to go Frank, to Frank Gifford, did he? Yeah, Frank Gifford, when it was snowing. <laughs> and then, you know, you, you sit down in the yeah. first quarter and you start drinking. By halftime, you can't even see the field and you don't know who's winning, but anything happens. You don't care. You, you don't care. You're cheering. <laughs> hey! Right. A, dog, a, a cat can grow. A cat can walk on the show. Field. <laughs> Don't do what he does. I don't know. But, or he did. <laughs> but, but in those days, you were taking in New York. You took the subway home. Right. So you didn't have to drive. That's anyway, true. guys. Have All right. Monday well, night. there's Monday oh. night football. There's Thursday night football. There is uh, uh, 
and, and, and college, football, college football, you forgot that. And college college football. football, definitely. Every, every kind of football. So thanks for joining us for Courtney on Health. To get more info, follow Courtney on her Facebook page, Courtney on Health, on Instagram at CLG Wellness, and visit her website, CourtneyGravities.com. For more shows, go to MalcolmPresents.com and TheMinnieShadesOfGreen.com. This is Courtney on Health, Smart Sound Nutrition, Strong Safe Fitness, and we'll catch you, literally, like we'll catch you. Wow. next time. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a, have a great week. Bye. Have a great game tonight. Bye. Bye. Good game. Bye.